let's talk a little bit about matchmaking, right? Mm. Because there's always, like, I mean, you, you, you wrote the original matchmaker, I think, in PHP for Titanfall 1. Uh -huh. I just had to say that. Yeah. But, um, and then Callus took it over and Lua Resty and a bunch of other interesting stuff. But uh, tell us about your approach for matchmaking and, like, maybe, maybe, maybe talk in terms of constraints because you've got this, like, ping constraint, skill constraint, the number of players that are there. How do you, how do you balance all that? I want to I want to be clear on this one that I am not speaking on behalf of uh, any of the games that respawn or Infinity yeah, Ward yeah, made yeah. because no, just, uh, your they, your ideal and the way that you John you think about it. It really depends on the type of game you're making. So if you're making you know a very competitive game, you know let's say it's Valorant, um, you want to make sure that well it, it, there's no wrong answer to this one, but my gut is always you want to minimize the the amount of players who quit your game forever right. um, because you can get your game into a really unhealthy pattern if you have a problem where there's more people quitting than oh, starting vicious, your game. It's a vicious cycle because it, it actually will take it all the way down because fewer players, more frustration, fewer players. Yeah. And it'll go it's all the way down. Self-eating loop. Yep. Yeah, one of one of the patterns you'll see is if people feel like they don't have a chance of doing well, not winning, but just doing well, um, then then they'll quit. And so if your goal is to, to sort of attack it from that side first of like, let's make sure that new players don't get stomped, then you need to do, you know, something to make sure that their first few matches are not a, just a total bloodbath. Um, and you know, give them a chance to learn stuff. But that's the other one that game developers really underestimate how long it takes normal gamers to learn all the mechanics of a game because we, we've we been playing these games for years when they launch. Yeah. And so to us, it's all very obvious and, you know, it takes you a match to try each gun one time and then you're, you're good. And in reality, we have to be more understanding and forgiving of regular tired people who are maybe not entirely focused on the game that they're playing and they're not trying to explore every feature and every item in the game. So I really want to give new players like a window of time in the beginning to uh, try stuff out, learn from it and not feel like their, their experience is like punishment. Um, Cause it's, it's okay that they need a little while to like try things. And so it's not that people have to win. It's not that, you know, we have to like, put them in a match full of bots just to make sure that their first match is a win type logic. It's mostly just like, how long did they stay alive after they spawned? Uh, how many times did they die? How many kills did they get? And you would and actually watch that. You would actually watch that and be tuning to try to get that. It depends on the game. Right. Um, but yeah, there. like if you kind of think back to like Titanfall style where it's, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's not a casual game by any stretch, but it's not a esport. It is, you're you're running around and shooting stuff, and some of them are AI, and some are players, and hey, stop, we're giving you targets yeah. to hit, so that even like a, a new player can can get a kill, even if it's not on a player. Um, and you just want to make sure that you really get that part right because new player churn is just a a game ender. Um, and then past that, you want to make sure that people have the right amount of challenge. They're not winning every match. They're not losing every match, and also the ability to adapt to changes in skill. Um, there is a possibility that some of your user base uh, might have different levels of uh, motor skills on certain nights versus others, or <laughs> a degradation of motor skills as they sit on a couch for three hours and, and do something else. Um, and so you want your game to, to be able to adapt to that. And, and, and the actually the case that I love to bring up is someone's over at your house you go try this game and hand them your controller yeah and, and now you're now skill-based matching for you is applied to them and yeah. so games obviously can't detect that but ga gamers are not necessarily thinking hey my friend is about to get absolutely de demolished <laughs> while i'm trying to convince him that this game is fun yeah uh and so you have to do a skill system that isn't taking 50 matches to train. Um, it, it's fine if you want to use that data, but you don't get 50 matches from most players. 
And so you really want something that can be adaptive, that gives people varying level of challenge. Um, I always think like the the ideal system for most players is that, you know, if it's a team-based game, you know, you win half, you lose half. And if you're winning more than half and or losing more than half, the game might not feel like a challenge. And we see people who churn out because they win every time. Wow, and I, know, I didn't know that. So I would, yeah. I would, it's obvious, like, if I'm getting my ass handed to me every single game, I'm like, okay, I'm out, right? Yeah, I, I, but I think you win all the time and you get out. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, winning all the time is actually a predictor of churn. And it, it, it's, it's pretty wild. Like, you know, you look at the graph of like how many of their last 10 games did they win? It kind of like, and how long do they retain after that? It keeps going up and up and up until they get to the I win every time and then they drop off Done. because like there's wow. nothing here for me anymore. Yeah. I'm wow. I'm God here. Yeah, it turns out challenge is fun. Yeah. Uh, I know there's a lot of opinion out there, people who think they don't win enough or that they lose too much or whatever. Uh, and I'm not trying to attack that. Like it, there are games that do it better and worse. And so there's legitimate opinions from people about certain games and the way they're they're tweaked. But in general, I think we were aiming for the the mass market to have a good challenge and a good variety of gameplay and outcomes. And so the, the like a, a good example of this is like the sort of in Titanfall, they would have that the the team versus team thing, and it could, you know, the loser had to uh get on the dropship and escape and the winning team had to stop. But that like was super cool because you'd always be trying to peg the people escaping. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes get them but sometimes they would get away and they would feel a sense of satisfaction and it was away. it was a chance at redemption yeah and awesome. we we spent a lot of time tweaking the skill system on titanfall one to make it more and more and more uh skill based and and this is where the 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 sweaty phrase would come and it was it was exhausting to play uh because every match would come down to the wire well not literally but we really did a, an it effective an job intense. of making that happen more it was an intense game, and I think a lot of feedback was like, "Wow, Titanfall's such an intense experience." Titanfall one, so yeah. And then and so, change, did match. you change that for Titanfall two? We definitely. So the the way this works is everyone imagines that you have infinite users, and so you can make this perfect match of everyone's the same skill. Yeah, and that is basically never happens. Not even yeah. with that you guys make. Yeah, even not even with millions. <laughs> Yeah, even with millions of players, like that is not the truth. Yep. So there's always a push and pull of like, do we launch this game right now with this group of players? Do we wait a little bit longer for others? And mm -hmm. then if we're not getting enough players every second to launch matches, like mm -hmm. which ones are waiting? Because there's there's also the problem of you could take a, a really higher or low skill player and make them wait a little longer for a match. And yeah they could be upset about matchmaking times and you fix it by it's such a tight widening your 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 range and now yeah. there's people other people are mad about getting stomped and so yeah. it's like there is no easy fix for these things you're, you're i know a lot these, of people these three different axes there's like yeah i don't want to match people too far away mm -hmm. yep. right i don't want to have too much of a skill variance or at least an imbalance between teams but then there's there's not enough people to play right now in this region for this person, and they have to relax along two of those axes sometimes or one, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a tough optimization problem. It, it's almost yeah. really like it's like there's a flavor, whatever you choose, and that will almost define your game. Yeah, and it's no yeah, and and it. so that's that's one of those cases where we talk about what do you want to do in Australia at two a.m. of like. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will say like, well, it should never launch a match if the skill gap is too high. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, three lobbies that it won't launch. People just can't play. People yeah. get so, so pissed off if they can't play. So you end up finding, like the, everyone always starts with their sort of hard line in the sand of, well, it should mm -hmm. never do this because this is bad. Yeah. I won't and let then people if play you... if latency is above X. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Total and in the end, like early mistake. Yeah. yeah. You, you have kind of two hard problems to solve. One is low pop of low population of like eventually you just have to have to like relax all these rules and just let someone play your game even if play. yeah even if it's a we know beforehand it's going to be a rough match the alternative is literally stopping them from playing because we decide from our our throne that this match is too bad to launch which i think is bad design mm -hmm. um and then the other one is uh 
like what do you do with like really high skill players because they get exhausted playing only high skill players Mm -hmm. and like we talked about earlier they can really cause churn in your general player base like outsize because you know you'll see someone who wins a match by just like such a big margin like drew for example yes maybe not anymore back in the day sure (laughs) big check (laughs) uh that you know there's a lot of people who it, it might be their first time coming back to the game or even if they're you know reasonable skill they people come in with their own sort of narrative in their head of like what is about to happen and if it plays out in a way that just feels hopeless then you know you're you're gonna have people quit so it's not that i never want high skill players to win or that i am trying to punish them by you know pulling them out of the general population that's where the variety comes in of they should win some matches and they should lose some and it can't be exhausting Mm -hmm. or you'll lose them too and so that is it's really hard to do yeah, there's it's amazing. There's, there's like amazing. a. I, I didn't even know any of this, John. There's really, <laughs> really good info that you're sharing. I appreciate it. Here's the hard truth the internet doesn't care about your game. After all the blood, sweat, and tears you've put into making your game, you launch, and some players get terrible network performance. What can you do about it? Build your own internet? This is why we created Network Next. Network Next is a radically new way of linking networks together. It's a new internet. One where networks compete on a neutral marketplace to carry your game's traffic. Network Next puts you, the game developer, in control of the network. We monitor every player's network performance and you choose when to accelerate them. Not only will you see better network performance for your players, you'll also have the security of knowing that if one network is congested, we switch to another in seconds. Now you control the network.